everyone. I'm Molly Oyua with Sacred Fire Creative, and I work with visionary women leaders and help them with their branding, web design, and marketing. And so today, I'm working today with a visionary women leader, and her name is Abby Tarshes. And so let's bring her out. Hi. There she is. Hi, everybody. Hi, Abby. <laughs> Hi, Molly. You know, a lot of a lot of people who are just joining us, if you are out there, then please, please be sure to add your hearts. So hearts, please. And then also, if you can do this, and I'm going to do this right now, and share this video. Even if you're on the replay, hi replayers, thank you for watching. And please share this video so we can get some more exposure for Abby out there. And then let's get started. All right. So, did you get a chance to share there? Abby, did you get to see how to do that? Did I? Okay. I, see us. I see us live. Okay, cool. You get it? Yeah. Yeah. Because I want to make sure that people who know you get to see this too, you know, so. Um, yes, hold on. No, I'm, it's funny, it's going to. So while you're doing that, the mm -hmm. reason that, you know, I've been asked this before. So why, why Facebook Live? And so I will tell you, after the last Facebook Live, Within 24 hours, we had a thousand views on that video. And that kind of exposure is what I want to bring to the women business owners that I work with. So it's really simple for me. You know, it seems like getting live video just exposes you to be your authentic self, you know, and get really deep into what you're doing and get to know the people that you're in front of. So, you know, I like to say that I help my clients connect, make that soul connection, make that deep, like, heart soul connection with their ideal clients through branding, web design, and marketing. And I feel like Facebook Live has been an amazing platform to be able to do that. So, how'd it go, Abby? You? Um, it's not connecting, so we'll just have to do it after. Okay, so I tagged you in that, so hopefully, here, yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can share it for you okay. to your timeline. And I don't, yeah, don't want to go off the feed here. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Post it to your timeline too, so everybody who knows you and is friends with you will get to see you. So, Abby. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a photographer and I photograph people and I've been doing this for a really long time. I started out um, as an art photographer, actually, doing a lot of fine art. Um, and then I ended up doing movie stills and that's basic. that was my school, was working on movies is how I learned lighting and how to get the shot and... Almost my whole basis of my photography, honestly, was learned on a movie set by watching the cinematographers, watching the actors, watching the interactions. Um, that's kind of what makes me a little bit unique, I think, is my fine art background, plus having worked on movie stills. And even though I don't really do that anymore, I work a lot with families and do weddings and portraits, but it's still, all about getting the shot and the connection between people. That's what matters to me. So I'm a little curious, just backing up to a couple of things that you said. Um, you know, when you're talking about fine art photography, what makes something fine art versus what we are what we normally see out there? Well, that's completely subjective. Um, everyone's sense is different um, of what they consider art. So that's a really tough question. Well, but when you say you have a background in fine art photography. I mean, that I've studied art history. I've studied photography, the history of photography. 
It also means I come out it from maybe not a lot of photographers maybe are just commercial. It's like super glossy and it's all polish and it's more like advertising. For me, it's more about um, creating beauty and something real, real and beautiful. Okay. And so how did you first get into the cinematography working on movie sets? How did that happen? It happened purely by chance. Um, I never, it never occurred to me that that was even a job. <laughs> I was kind of just being a young little artist in New York City and then I needed a job and I got a job in a film office and I overheard them saying they needed to hire a still photographer. I'm like, oh, well, I'm a photographer. You should hire me. And I showed them some of my cool stuff I was doing at the time and I really had very, very limited experience, but they didn't pay me much. And I did the job and then they used um, one of my photos as a movie poster and it had a fame it had a famous model at the time, Paulina Porzakova. And anytime she was dressed up, we got beautiful pictures of her. And so I and after that movie I had like a great portfolio and a movie poster. And then people just thought, Oh, let's hire her. And that's it was great. Like I traveled the world and it was awesome. So when you're, you say you've been doing photography for a long time, like what are we talking here? Like, like 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Yeah, wow. It's a long time. And so this one movie kind of gave you your start and then it snowballed from there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what, um, do you have movies that you've worked on that, you know, are like popular that we'd recognize or? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I did more um, kind of avant-garde movies, but I worked with Gus Van Sant on My Own Private Idaho, and wow. um, even Cowgirls Get the Blues, and the movie I was talking about was called Anna, and I've just done various movies um, like that. So then, do you do, like, video as well, or you did this not. I don't do video. Um, Something I'm thinking about actually branching out into, but I would say thus far, I don't. Um, my daughter does, <laughs> but I don't yet. So was there like a moment when you were, when you were doing these, you know, when you're working on these movie sets and you just felt like this is it, like this is what I was meant to do or? No, I'm not really. <laughs> It was, I mean, it's really hard being a still movie stills photographer because okay. you're there for the publicity and advertising department. You're not a part of actually making the movie. So you really need to use, I mean, it's one time I was very thankful I'm small because I could fit under the camera and just my, I learned how to make my presence little and just kind of pop up, click, 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 get the shot, do it really, really fast. Um, but no, I never thought, oh, this is the end all. It was a great learning experience and it was a great foundation for everything I've done in photography um, as far as technical skills and just people skills because everything seemed so easy, so easy after <laughs> working on movies because you're not really wanted but you, you know, I always made friends, and it was fun. But it's a lot. It's very long hours, a lot of waiting. So um, it was kind of a step, a great step, and I'm so thankful to have done it. So, what was like the most challenging part about what you did before? on on films? Mm -hmm. Is having well the light. First of all. I'd always be like, come on guys, let's add a little more light because it was so dark. And I was shooting slide film and color uh, and black and white film. And it's not like digital. There was no Photoshopping. There was no fixing things and blowing, you know, sliding with sliders and no light room. So you really had to be precise. You had to get your exposure correct. And that was challenging. So, um, but it, really makes me a good photographer now <laughs> having that knowing how things actually work and not just fixing everything like in photoshop okay 
So do you think that, you know, that is the main thing that you learn from that experience that you bring to your current clients? Um, I, that's a big part of it, I think, is just that um, I have the experience of working in a medium that was much more difficult in the technical sense of low light. But, um, yeah, and I also feel like I had such a small window of opportunity sometimes to actually get the shot that it made it easy for me to, to kind of deal with, like, babies crying, children having meltdowns. That's nothing. It's, like, it's so easy. It's so, um, it's just life, and it's fine. I guess it just gave me a, I don't know how to say this exactly. It just made things simple that I do now. So this whole time, have you always, you know, worked for yourself? Yes, I have always worked for myself, for better or for worse. I, I mean, I can only imagine actually working for myself, but I sometimes am envious, like, God, an accountant, like, they're getting money every week, and they know what's, where are their paychecks coming from, but this is what I chose. You know, it's, I like it. I love, I, you know, there's, it's like a high. Like, if I'm doing a shoot and I'm with someone, and it's that feeling, like, when you just feel like you've created something beautiful, there's nothing better than that. It's worth all the stress, all the, sometimes the planning and everything. So, yeah, I've always worked for myself. So, what kind of work do you do right now? Right now, I'm really doing a lot of parties, private events, and I do a lot. I'm just doing, I just did a wedding on Saturday. Pearl and Ben, you're on your honeymoon. I love you guys. It was so much fun. They were awesome. And um, so, like, that was great, even though it's a little, you know, it's, weddings are way more stressful than movies because it's real life. But it's also that adrenaline rush. I, I like it because it uses all my skills of natural light, lighting, working with people, just like you just don't know exactly what's happening. And it's fun. It's exciting. It's not boring. And that's one thing. Like everything, everything I do, every job is different. And I love that so much. So... I know that you just went to an event in New York. Is that right? Is that oh, pretty typical for you? Well, yes, I just shot Axel Bar Mitzvah in New York City. Yeah, that was super fun. That was great. Um, and uh, I, from that job, actually, I'm going to be doing another one in New York, although not for like a year and a half. But um, that was amazing, and I would love to do more Bar and Bat Mitzvahs. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's all about family and I and kids and milestones of life mm -hmm. that are super super important. And we need good photography. <laughs> so I mean, is that pretty typical that you do like fly to New York for your photo shoot, or do you do a lot of work locally? I do work locally, and I want to do more work locally in Portland. As you know, I recently came up here from the Bay Area, so. Just this month, I think I've flown back and forth four times. I'm going back to the Bay Area. I can't remember what day. I think I'm going Friday, <laughs> and then I'll be back Sunday or Monday. So sometimes it's like, I don't know where I am, but it's fine. It's fun. I like it. But I'd like to be, I'm trying to be a little more based in Portland. Mm -hmm. um, even though I, I have all my I have wonderful clients and lots of uh, always be in the Bay Area for sure. So. so tell us a little more about, you know, what you're looking for, like what kind of clients you're looking for. You told us you do events, you want to do more bar mitzvahs. What else are you looking at right now? Well, anything with people, really. I would love to photograph anything from you know, a headshot, a professional headshot to, a, you know, a full-blown wedding or a small intimate wedding, a bar mitzvah, a private party. And I, what I, I also really, really love photographing families. That's probably one of my favorite things. Um, I just love seeing how everyone interacts and who bugs who and 
Um, and that moment in time, because kids grow up so fast, to be able to give people like these photographs that they're going to look back on and hopefully pass on. So, yeah. So, um, one of the things that you don't know, so I'm kind of like springing this on you right now. Abby. Yeah, what? <laughs> Is that, um, so I just want to thank you because I know I've referred you to clients and I've gotten some really good feedback in just your, your professional interaction with them. And so for me, that's very important because I'm typically referring to other business owners and we're doing work for their website or for their marketing media. And so we want to make sure that it's very professional. And, you know, so when I'm referring, I want to make sure that my clients are taken care of. And, you know, I've had the experience where they've let me know, my clients have let me know, actually, that they had a really good experience with you and then maybe not as good as experience with others. And so just thank you so much for, you know, getting back to people right away, being professional, um, you know, being really clear in your communication, because I think that that is so important. And, you know, of course, I love your work. And, you know, <laughs> your work is amazing. So, so um, much. So kind. I love you. Um, <laughs> thank you for saying that because I didn't know that. But I am, I'm very, I really take myself seriously as a professional, although I'm goofy and weird and I, I like to have fun. But as as far as business stuff goes, I yeah, I'm professional. And I take that, I take being, I take my job seriously. But I like, I do go a little crazy sometimes. Like I can be a little wacky and I like, I'll do whatever it takes to get the shot. And that might be saying really stupid things to children sometimes, but. <laughs> or, so tell us, yeah. can you tell us a crazy story about like something that you had to do to get the shot. Like what's the craziest thing that you had to do? I don't know if this is the craziest thing, but I remember once I was shooting, I was taking photos um, at this preschool and this kid was crying, crying, crying. And I will never, ever, I do not want to, I mean, unless like we're in someone's house and it's cute, like the kid is crying. But like for me, if you're crying, I'm not gonna take a picture. But this kid, he was just crying. So I don't know. I just took a Band-Aid and like stuck it on my mouth and I tried to yank it off and I was just like, ow, ow. And, he thought that was so funny. So this kid went from like total crying to laughing his head off. We got the best pictures and it was all, it was a great experience. So that's just one example. But so, I have said many heart jokes in my time. And I never thought that I would be a person who would ever. I'm very sophisticated, you know, like I don't. <laughs> and I think how you're whispering like, so that we can barely yeah. hear you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I think some of the clients, if they happen to be watching this, you know exactly what I've done and what I'm, I will go the distance. So <laughs> it's a little embarrassing, but um, overall, that's just with little kids. And then well, I just kind of talk to everybody equally, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what really age they are, what position in life they are. I just... For me, I just treat everyone. I want to treat everybody the same, whether, no matter what. I love it. So um, I have a few more questions for you, but I'm gonna just hide these for a sec and show this. So if you have questions for Abby and you're watching, I see a couple of you on there, please add them to the comments. And if you're on the replay, please add your questions to the comments. We would love to hear them and get them answered for you. So um, let's see. One of the things that I wanted to ask you is, you know, there are, I mean, there's so many photographers out there. So yeah. you kind of knew this question was coming up, right? And I, I see there's some things that really set you apart. So I'm really, I feel like confident that there's a lot of things that we've already talked about that set you apart. Um, but What's, what's something that can help somebody if they're going into a photo shoot? Like one of your clients, say, they're coming to a photo shoot. What is something that you want people to know that you haven't been able to express maybe? And you just think like, wow, if they just knew this, 
um, if they just knew they were supposed to wear this color or if, you know, whatever it is, um, what, mm -hmm. would, what is something you want people to know? Well, besides what to wear, I mean, I can set, if it's, you know, an engagement shoot, I will send you a PDF of, your, you know, this whole information on what to expect, what to wear, and it's all based on what I like. So um, you may, if, and I kind of put that in, like, if you like bright colors, wear that. Like, I want people to genuinely be themselves and be comfortable, but I want people to look their best, at their best selves. And, um, the question, though, what I would want people to know is just we're going to have fun. Ultimately, just take a deep breath. I actually am very uncomfortable in front of the camera, so I understand it. And that's why when I'm photographing you, I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. I'm talking a lot, but I'm really actually interested in you. I want to know everything about you, where you came from, what you, it just helps me if I know what your likes are, what, what is important to you. And so I do tend to talk and ask a lot of questions. It's not like a, there's no script, nothing's planned, but um, I think basically just show up yeah. and I will guide you. You don't have to really do anything. Just hopefully you're gonna have a good attitude. If not, I'm gonna try and get you to have a good attitude. And that usually people, you know, it's all good. Awesome, awesome. So, hi Ellie. We'll just put her up here. You can know she's she's watching. Hi Ellie. Hi. Good to see you on here. Um, if you have any questions for Abby, please type them in the comments. We'd love to know your questions. I have um, another question, which is really, you know, about other photographers. So I don't know if you want to share this because this would be like your trade secrets or something. I don't know. I feel like, well, I feel like you know, people want to work with you because of of you, right? And you have a great relationship with people, and you're so personable and I'm confident, hundred percent, that you will get amazing shots. Uh, what do you? What kind of advice do you have for those business owners who they're in your business, right? They're in the business of photography who are just maybe they're just starting out or they're having a hard time like getting their first clients. What kind of advice do you have for them? Um, keep photographing. Just I think you need to practice. You need to put your ego at the door <laughs> and learn. That's it. And honestly, when I was younger, I had to learn that too. I had to sometimes, you know, put my ego down and just step in and learn and frankly i think people need to to really learn how to if you're a photographer learn how to use your camera practice 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 shoot stop copying people i mean it's not gonna work if you're just copying all the time just find your what's you love to do and and just keep shooting and also be open to learning and frankly i'm still learning I feel like, yes, I know a lot of stuff, but I don't know a lot of stuff. Every, I can learn from someone just starting out. Like they might know something that I'm, I can completely learn from. And I think that's cool. Like I like to help other people. And no matter where you are in your business, everyone has something that we can all share and learn from. And one thing about Portland, I am going to say, is that the photography community here is very awesome and supportive. Like just Portland in general, I find to be a really unique place in that women especially are very helpful to each other and are supportive. And that feels so good um, compared to some other places where it's kind of kept thrown. Everyone wants each other's clients and um, it's really, really nice. I love that community feeling here. I'm completely not even answering your question. So <laughs> sorry about that. No, I, I love that you said that because the community that we have here is so important and it's so collaborative. Yeah. And for you to recognize that as a newcomer and to see that is wonderful. Um, 
and it's just it's just really great to hear and know that you know that's that's true. So it's, it's and, really um, true. It yeah. makes me feel really, really. I love it. I love that feeling of being able to just talk about technical or any kind of photography issue, and there's a lot of support around here. It's nice. It's it's unique for sure. Awesome. So um, we do have a question for you talking about the technical. So yeah. Ellie says, you may have mentioned something about this, and I apologize if you did as I jumped on a little late. Do you, uh, do you do much in terms of photo editing software and modifying photos you've taken? That's a great question, Ellie. I try to do as little as possible because I have, uh, right now, I am so backed up with editing, it is ridiculous. So I try, my goal is to pretty much get it right in camera, but yes, I use, I do shoot in RAW, which um, means all the information is there, it's not a JPEG, so I basically process the images and I have a certain way that I do it. And I do go through every single photo, I still do that, I care about each and every, um, maybe I'm a control freak, I, care, I um, really care about each image, um, almost like it's a person, I'm really attached to it, so I want it to look good, but I try and keep it at a minimum, and I like, I do not like to use, overuse filters, I like to have a very classic, elegant, simple style, I do not like fads and trends and crazy editing. It's just not going to stand the test of time at all. So like, I don't want my pictures to look like, oh, that was in the 70s when everyone painted their walls avocado green. And you're like, oh, that's so ugly. Like, Yeah. So I try and avoid all that kind of stuff. And it's actually been good for me because I still kind of like what I shot a, a while ago. So awesome. So that you brought up a really good point. Um, and just talking about your style, and so it's really good for people to hear that you do have that classic style that's going to stand the test of time. So, and I love that style. And oh, something that I forgot that we didn't get to bring up um, is I know that you worked with a lot of high profile like celebrities and clients. Are you like not allowed to say anything about that, or I'm not going to say anything? about that I have yeah I do have you know um, there are celebrity clients and high-profile business people but um, I will not talk about that <laughs> just to protect people's privacy which I take very seriously and having trust in me um, is everything whether you're a janitor or you're the owner of the world, a company, whatever it might be, a star, like you're, I'm not ever gonna divulge anything. So. <laughs> That's so important. So, I mean, it's I love hearing trust. That. It's all about trust. Mm -hmm. And I want people, it's my reputation. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to trust me. So, um, I think that, you know, for a business owner, Trust is so important. So I love that, I mean, that this point kind of brought up that trust issue, that you have to be trustworthy, that your clients have to really, you know, they, they actually like get to know you and have that relationship with you. And then, um, you know, so they work with you in all different ways and then they refer you to other high profile clients or celebrities or whoever because they know that they can trust you. And so it just continues. And so you've built up this, like you said, a reputation and you've built up this following. And I think I think that's pretty amazing. And it shows in the work that you do. So I mean I'm still working on it. I, you know, I'm still want to get out there and, you know, definitely reach more people, but it is all about trust, no matter who you are, frankly. Yeah and delivering on a consistent basis. And I think that's the difference between, back to your new photographer question, okay. there are a lot of new photographers and they might be able to have a trick or two, but to be able, it's consistency. You've gotta be able to 
deliver to your clients what they want consistently, not just one time, but you have to be able to go back and, and every time create something new and hopefully meaningful for whatever it is they might be doing. So you're just consistently delivering that quality product and able to reproduce it at a moment's notice. And I feel like that goes back to your cinematography experience, you know, having to, to really perform like right away on the spot and, you know, just do it as is, um, do it live basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that added a lot, I mean, to your experience. Um, do you feel like that or? Yeah, I do. I, I do. And it gave me a lot of confidence because when I first started out, I was so nervous. Like, oh, what am I doing? I, I, truthfully, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what job I'm doing. Every time before I do a job, I'm running it through my head. I'm pre-visualizing things. I'm nervous. Like, I, sometimes I even have, I used to have dreams when I was on movie, like night photo, nightmare dreams. Like I show up on set. And there's no film. My film's all bad. I don't have film. I'm going to miss the shot. And even just this wedding where I'm very comfortable with on Saturday, I dreamt that the wrong, I brought the wrong camera. I mean, it just doesn't even make sense. So I still, and no matter what, I'm still kind of thinking about it. I'm not just sitting back and uh, hanging out. I'm always trying to improve. I feel like I have a lot of ways to improve it just want to be better every single time. So. so what are some ways that you improve? Is it just going out and doing it or is it like? I think it's just trying new lighting techniques for me right now. Just kind of honing in on certain things that I like and perfecting it. Mm -hmm. um, especially with weddings right now. Not the, and not, not really natural light, but um, using off-camera flashes, that kind of thing. It's just, it's just so much. There's always something to learn, and there's all these new cameras. I'm not really in a gearhead. I would be, you know, I don't care about the newest, shiniest object at all. But I do want to whatever can enable me to kind of come up with something interesting lighting or just add depth. That's what I'm interested in. So what does the future hold for you? What's your plans in the next five, 10 years? Um, I'm going to be photographing tons of weddings, tons of our mitzvahs, families, headshots, anything that people need. I'm going to travel. I'm going to take care of my dogs. I have one dog, I have two dogs here right now. They're being really good and not barking. <laughs> and, um, pets, like I love photographing pets, just people, living creatures. Um, I just want to be healthy and help people, you know, just have beauty and memories that prints and albums, physical objects that they can have. I don't want people having digital files just floating around randomly on their computers that are going to get lost. So I really encourage people. Even if it's your iPhone pictures, just print out your pictures. If you're with me, I would love to give you a beautiful print. That's really satisfying. And if, or an album, something that will stand the test of time that you can pass on to future generations. God, I sound really corny, don't I? But <laughs> I do mean it. So. No, I'm glad that you brought that up because I had forgotten that that's another Part of your business that you're really involved with the archiving of photos and also printing and just having that physical photo do you want to talk about that a little more or do you feel like you know why is that important to you it's important to me well for there's a lot of personal reasons why it's important to me but it's you know i um, I'm not going to go into that right now because I will probably start crying, but, um, but <laughs> I've had family photos that were thrown away and when I was younger, and so I don't want to go into the whole thing. And so I really, that, I think that's part of the reason why I feel so important to be able to look back on photographs um, and to have those memories because sometimes 
that's all you have left. You can even, I mean, I've had experiences where I've shot families and then a child all of a sudden could pass away. And then all you, you know, those photographs become super, super important. It could be a grandfather. You just don't know what's going to happen in your life. So I kind of, on a personal level, I feel it's really important, but I also feel like it is for everybody just to have that. And if it's just on your computer, you can't find it. It's just a big mess. You, it's nice to have a print. A print will last. Um. Here's another question for you. Do you yeah. do the printing or have you found some very good printing companies? I mean, I, well, I used to print my own black and white in the dark room. I never did print color, but I love, I still have my enlarger, but um, the, I don't do, it's probably better that we're not doing all that chemistry right now, but I have, I have really good labs, like professional labs that I send all my work to. There's a few different ones and they're excellent. So I do not do my own printing anymore. Uh, anything that you want to share about the printing labs or recommendations? No, not really. <laughs> okay. um, anything else that you want people to know about you? Just here's where you can find Abby. What? So okay. Here's where you can find Abby at her website. It's at a Tarsha's, which is her last name, photo.com. Yeah, Anything else up. before we leave? I just want to say thank you so much, Abby, for coming on and really, you know, sharing your story and getting to the that point where, you know, it's a little uncomfortable even and just knowing that you're here and of service to all these other people and business owners who are watching and just thank you so much for everything that you've shared. We have a question here, the, the favorite subject matter to shoot, and I think you had said people and events, and and uh, so I'll just show that really quick. You wanna say that again, your favorite subject matter to shoot? Well, it's people uh, in any configuration, whether it's a wedding, a family event, um, a portrait. I do love shooting portraits. And I love your pets too. Um, and Molly, thank you so much for having me. I, I'm really confident when I have my camera, but it's a little, as a photographer, like that, I'm in my element. I've got my cameras and I'm, that's my superpower, but it's a little hard to, you know, feel comfortable just talking about it. But thank you so much. And um, yeah, I would just love, I just love interacting with people and whether it's, you know, a personal, about photography or it's for your business. I just want to give you the best. I, I feel I love what I'm doing and I just want to just give every, I just want to sprinkle the world with photos all over the place and just, you know, keep, make you happy. That's it. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. We're going to wrap up and if you would like to be featured, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know, you know, go ahead and write in the comments if you want to be featured. Also, you can go to discoversacredfire.com and that goes to an application. And I'm also reaching out to business owners. If you want to get more exposure for your business, if you're looking for help with your marketing, go ahead and go to discoversacredfire.com, fill out the application. And we'll see if we would be a good fit to talk and um, work together. So the other thing you can do is you can find me at sacredfirecreative.com, which is my website. And again, I'm Molly Oyua. And thank you so much for being here and for watching today. Bye. <laughs>